But I want you to, to decree and declare that this is your knockout season. I want you to decree and Good afternoon, children of God. Get ready for your season of restoration, being replenished. Get ready for your season of rivers of living water flowing through you. So we're going to hop into this word today really quick. But before we do that, let's open up with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day, God, that you have made. Father, let us all continue to be glad and rejoice in it, Father God, for we know that joy cometh in the morning. So God, I come today just to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for waking me up this morning and starting me on my way and placing my feet on solid ground. God, I thank you for everyone attached to my YouTube channel, Father God. Lord, I ask that you touch them, that no matter where they go, Father God, no matter where their feet tread, oh God, that they are blessed and highly favored, God. So God, I thank you, Father God, for all that you're going to do in this season, God, Lord, keep them and cover them and keep them in perfect peace, King Jesus. So God, I thank you today. I thank you and I give you all honor and glory. Holy Spirit, have your way. Take over. Have your way. Speak through me, Holy Spirit, the words that you want me to be spoken out. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. So let's hop into this word really quick today. So we're going to be talking about hearing the voice of God. And a lot of people will ask this question sometimes, how do you hear the voice of God? How do you hear the still small voice of God? And when God begins to speak, I want you guys to just begin to think about one thing about God, that God is love. God is love and he loves his children so, 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 so much. Now, in the reference of what I'm speaking about now, and, and God is love. We know that Father God is a righteous judge, and there are times that he has to judge righteously. But right now, what I want you to focus on is just the love of God, the agape love that he has for his children. And so I want you to think about this. The Lord's word doesn't contradict itself it remains the same this is why i also recommend getting you a good bible and getting in the word of god and reading the word of god and also asking the holy spirit for the interpretation or the revelation of the word of god that you are reading have you ever been in a place and you realize that five people read a scripture but they all received different things from what they read now this is the thing sometimes Sometimes you can um, read something and the Lord is speaking something to you that he wants you to receive through a scripture that you have read. But this is why I also will tell people that when you are reading the word of God and you are looking at scriptures, make sure you read the entire chapter so that you get a good revelation about what was being spoken during that time frame of your Bible reading. So also as you read the Bible, take time to study the word so that you can rightly divide the word. So I want to use that as an example that God's word does not contradict itself. It remains the same. God's word doesn't just change for this circumstance and for that circumstance. God's word stays the same. And so that when you begin to hear the voice of God and he's speaking to you, remember that the voice of God, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth, not the spirit of lies. So you have to pay attention to what is coming in. Is what's coming in the voice that you're hearing? Is it a voice of truth or is it a voice of lies? You will know. So God's voice doesn't condemn, it convicts because he cares for his children. So I want you guys to think about that. There's no condemnation nor shame when it comes down to God. God's voice heals, his voice soothes, his voice restores, his voice edifies. So his voice heals, soothes, restores, and edifies. When God is speaking, it's always going to be an uplift, okay? Even if God says, my son, my daughter, I need you to repent and turn away from those things that you have been doing that are not of me. These things that you are doing are not pleasing to my sight. Repent, repent because I love you, my daughter. I love you, my son. I have plans for you to prosper you, for you to have an abundant life. I want you to have the best life. But I need you to come out of the current sin that you're in so that I can move in your life like I need to, like I want to. I'm here to bless you. I'm not here to hurt or harm you. 
but I need you to repent and turn away from those things that have held you bound. And so when you hear the Lord, he's going to speak to you in those terms. Okay? He's going to speak to you. Let me use an example of how the enemy would speak. You're never going to amount to nothing. You're not good enough. No one likes you. Why do you do those things that you do? See, why did you talk that way to that person when you went to the store? See, I told you they weren't going to think of you, think of you in a good way. See, you talk too much when you went over there. Oh, look at you. Yeah, oh, look at you with those shoes on. I told you when you went out with your friends that they were going to point out those shoes. They know where you got them from. I want you guys to hear the difference. The difference in that versus here is now God saying, daughter, your shoes are absolutely beautiful. It doesn't matter that you got them. I'm just going to use this as an example. Okay. It doesn't matter if you got them from Goodwill. They're beautiful. Just wear them. Go out and be you. It's not about the shoes that you have on. Go out and just enjoy yourself and be you. I promise you, and he might not say the word promise, we're using these as an example, okay? I promise you that they're going to love your shoes. They're absolutely stunning. Now go out with your friends and have fun. It's okay, okay? And now God is speaking to you, but it was with a voice of love, not a voice of hate, not a voice of anger, not a voice of disappointment, and I come today to let you know, too, if you've been feeling like you've done things and you're too far gone and you may feel like the Lord is disappointed in you. He's not disappointed in you. He's not. And he loves you so much. He's not disappointed. See, there's times, children of God, that we are in sin and we do certain things and the Lord still loves us. He just doesn't love the sin. So remember that, that the Lord still loves you. He just doesn't love the sin. So if there's anything today that you need to lay down, lay it down at his feet. He's not coming to condemn you. He's not coming to shame you. He's not coming to ridicule you. He wants you to grow. He wants you to soar. He wants you to roar. He wants you to be the best person ever that you can be. But you know what that requires? You being with him, spending time with him, abiding in him, getting to know him. So that he can set you free, heal you, deliver, restore, edify. He can do those things for you. But remember, remember children of God. God is not a God of condemnation or shame. I want you guys to think about and meditate on Ephesians 2 and 10. Meditate on that, Ephesians 2 and 10, so God can continue to work on you. And he can continue to build you and keep you in perfect peace. So I want you guys to meditate on Ephesians 2 and 10. And this is what the scripture says. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So think about that, which God prepared in advance for us to do. God is already with before us. God is already prepared. We are his handiwork. We were created. We were knitted by him, perfectly designed by him before we were placed in our mother's womb. God knew the plans, the purposes, what he had for us, what he wanted for us to do. So I want you guys to meditate on that scripture and really just dive in with the Holy Spirit and allow the Lord to begin to just minister to your spirit concerning what he's saying right here. And what does that mean for you right now in this season? And let this be an activation for you um, with you and the Holy Spirit getting to sit with him to hear the voice of God, to hear the voice of the Lord. So I want you guys to think about that. Now, these are revelation gifts, discerning of spirits, word of wisdom and word of knowledge. Now, understand this discerning of spirits is just not discerning of spirits, discerning something that's evil. You can also discern what's good. So it's not just an evil thing. And we often hear people say they have the gift of discernment. You have the gift of discerning of spirits. We do not wrestle 
against flesh and blood. Our battles are not against flesh and blood. And so you're not discerning the person. You're discerning the spirit that's operate, operating behind a thing, a situation, or a person. And so understand that in this gift, in the gift of discerning of spirits, you can discern bad or you can discern good. And understand this, that this particular gift, discernment or discerning of spirits, it can operate in a believer or a non-believer. So you don't have to be a believer of Christ to be able to discern something that's in operation. So I want you to understand that. So these are revelatory gifts, okay? Discerning of spirits, word of wisdom, word of knowledge. And we'll see certain different things operate in different people in different times. Um, so I want you guys just to think about these things when you're sitting and even when you're listening to the voice of God, what's coming in, what does it sound like to you? What, when you're, when you're listening to the to the voice of God, does it sound like Father God speaking to you? Based upon the things that I said to you earlier, be very mindful because also there are uh, spirits now that have gotten to the point where they can imitate the voice of God. Some people don't really understand that because it hasn't been like widely talked about. Um, and some things God will reveal over time to people but there that has been something that's been happening in the spirit realm. But we'll go a little deeper about those things another day. Right now, I just want you guys to focus on if you are struggling to hear the voice of the Lord. And honestly, children of God, more than likely, you will actually realize that you've heard God's voice before when you have that moment with him. And you'll actually realize that you've heard the voice of the Lord but when you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. The Lord is so sweet and so awesome and so loving and so caring that he'll do it and he'll speak to you in such a strategic way that you will know that your father has spoken. You will know that the Holy Spirit is speaking you will know that your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is speaking. So I want you guys just to think about it. Think about it with the love, the agape part of God. He's love. He's love. I want you guys to think about that. He's love. And remember this as we do a quick recap. The Lord's word does not contradict itself. God's voice heals, soothes restores and edifies his voice is love god's voice doesn't condemn it convicts because he cares for his children and so as i talked to you guys about earlier there will be times sometimes where god has to correct his children because he wants his children to come out of sin or come out of things that are wicked and things that are not of him and because of that and because he cares it will convict his voice will convict so do not get condemnation and shame or feeling condemned with conviction because sometimes it's not the enemy coming in it is God convicting the behavior and wanting his son or his daughter to change things that they've done that are not pleasing to his sight but this is the thing about God God is not a God um that doesn't believe in giving you a second chance. I thank God we don't serve. I think I'm so thankful that we don't serve a God that counts things off of chances because if so, we would be in a lot of trouble. And so we thank God that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins so that we can live so that we can be forgiven. John three sixteen. for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. And so I want you guys to think about that, how much God loves you, how much he loves you. Let me read this again. Let this marinate in your spirit. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. 
For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. So I want you guys to think about that. Meditate on Ephesians 2 and 10. Meditate on John 3, 16. And honestly, I recommend that you start at the top of um, John chapter 3 and just begin, just read, read. And if you have a Bible that has the red letters where, where it's actually red letter Bibles where Jesus was, we could actually see where Jesus was speaking. Just take time, even in your studies, take time to hear what the Lord was speaking, what he was saying. Take time to read what Jesus was speaking, what he was saying. Jesus spoke with such wisdom and, and, and such love, but it was so awesome to hear him speak, how he talked, how he articulated his words. Um, Jesus was just so wise and so intelligent. And just to hear how profound his speaking was, his teachings was just a very profound. And, oh, God is good. So we thank God for our Lord and Savior. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for your sacrifice. Thank you, Father God, for being the sacrificial, sacrificial lamb. And we give you all glory and honor and praise tonight. So, Father God, I just thank you. Thank you for the wonderful word of God that went forth today. Thank you, Father God. Holy Spirit, thank you, Abba Father, Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, I just thank you. Thank you, Father God, for all that you are doing. Thank you, Father God, that you're making ways out of no ways. Thank you, Father God, that you're making ways out of no ways. Thank you, Father God, that you're doing it right now. So, Father God, I just exalt your name tonight, and I say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for you are worthy to be praised. So I thank you, God. Let your name be exalted among all nations, Father God, for you are worthy, King Jesus. So I thank you tonight, Father God. Lord, just touch Everyone on my YouTube channel, Father God, Lord, bless and keep them that they're blessing their going their um, goings out and blessing their comings in, Father God. So, God, I just thank you for what you're getting ready to do, that we're going to stand as a body of Christ and serve you, Father God. Lord, thank you, Father God. That your people, Father God, I pray that this nation will put down their idols, Father God, and they will only serve you, King Jesus. So, God, I thank you. And every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. So, Father God, we love you so much and we give you all glory and honor and praise. In Jesus' mighty and holy name I pray. Amen. Shalom, shalom.